Hello students and welcome to Shigyan Manji Vidyapeet. Students, this is the third lecture for Social Science Standard 10. We were learning chapter number one. The first lecture, an introduction had been given for the complete textbook of Social Science. Rather than the textbook, we follow the material given by the school where complete information is given, not a thing will be missing from the textbook. Apart from that, something extra will be given which will be advantages for the students. So we will follow the material that is given to you, that will be given to you. In the first lecture, we learnt about the complete layout of the social science material. It's divided into the term one, term two. The term one will have 11 chapters of history, geography, economics, and civics. Same way, some 10 chapters are kept in the second term. The remaining chapters are kept in the second term. Then we started with the understanding of chapter number one. In the previous lecture, that is lecture number two, we carried on with the understanding. Let us take a quick recap of what we have learned so far in the previous two lectures. Revision or recap, we have understood the summary of the chapter. Summary of the chapter is very, very important because at the end of the uh, first term, when you are prepared, to give the exams for essay 1 that is summative assessment 1 you have 11 chapters is you hardly get a day in that one day it is impossible to complete reading of the material of 11 chapters so this summary becomes very very helpful not only for essay 1 it helps you for prelims also when you have the complete book and of course it is very very helpful when you are uh, revising for a quick revision for the final exam before the final exam when your preparations are to be finalized at that time the summary helps a lot right so according to the need of the chapter each and every chapter need is different so summary may change from one page one and a half page to two pages according to the requirement but it is very very helpful it is better to go through 40 pages rather than going to read for 500 pages together right so summary of the chapter where everything that should be in the chapter is given over there and if you go through it it's very helpful next we learned about the shloka that is given in the Vishnu Puran regarding the extent of India from the Himalayas in the north to the Indian Ocean in the south from Bay of Bengal in the east to Arabian Sea in the west the area in between this is known as Bharat and the people residing in it are known as Bharatiya, India, Indians, Bharat, Bharatiya, that is what we learn. Next important thing that we learned is the translation and the meaning of the sloka. We got to remember the sloka, the translation and meaning, which fetches us two marks. It's an independent question of two marks. Next, India, since ancient time, it was famous for peace and prosperity. We had rich land, we have the ever flowing rivers sweet water and that gave us whatever we need yes we need crops we need vegetation forest everything is helpful to us in one or another way all the natural resources we have abundance of it because India is a vast country that we learnt so people outside India got attracted because we were famous for peace and prosperity Peace is there and that is why prosperity is there. Plus the land is self-giving. right? So that is why we had riches. That is why we had prosperity. And it happened because we are peaceful people, trade-oriented people. So people outside India got attracted and came to us for business purposes, for trading, for settling in India. And when they came and settled in India, they adopted the values of the customs, tradition, religion, society, the, the uh, values of non-violence, 
the values of Satchit, Anand, all these things they adopted. Plus, we also took lots of things from them, right? We basically took ideas, their way of living. We accepted lots of things from them, right? Their customs, tradition, we tried to involve in our... And they adopted and included our customs and traditions, religion, language, and they tried to mix. So, the foreigners and the people residing in India, because of their mutual exchange, our heritage became richer and richer. Next thing we learned is, we realized the values of Sat, Chit and Anand. We have done this Sat, that means the truth. Chit means Anand. Yes, uh, most of the time you might have heard your parents and your teachers telling you, Ki aapka padai mein chit nahi lag raha. What is that Chit? Concentration. Yes, because body and mind they have to align when you sit to study yes that alignment is not there yes your body is playing with some toys pens anything that is in your hand pen pencil eraser sharpener compass box right you are eating drinking at the same time so the mind and body does not align all right so that is the meaning chit chit is that inner peace yes so truth inner peace when we have these two things we automatically get anand that is the joy so realizing sat chit and anand through lots of ways people contributed now People will interact in the society, yes, people, they are the producers of the culture, they are the producers of the customs, tradition, they follow particular religion, they have some expertise in some of the work, plus people from outside also came over here, yes, they brought with them ideas, customs, traditions, language, script, literature, yes. Most important thing is the ideas that they brought from their homeland. So, people, whether came from outside or people already living in India, they contributed to the richness, advancement of our society, advancement of our civilization and thus people contributed with the help of their intellectuality, that is their intelligence, their ability to do something, their talent, whatever talent in whichever field they had, and they had lots of experience which gives skill, right? So, with the help of these four th things, these four things, people contributed to the heritage. Now, we continue ahead with our today's lecture. Next, we come to the two types of heritage that we have. One is cultural heritage and the other is the natural heritage. So, natural heritage we place first because it was there when we were not there, right? So, natural heritage comes first, then comes cultural heritage. But first, let us learn the definition of first thing is culture, second thing is heritage. Then we can combine these two words as cultural heritage and natural heritage. Now, first thing to understand is what is culture? Culture is created by human beings. The people living on islands, people living in far off distant places in quite dense forest or people living in remote places like high mountains, wherever you see, they are separated from the regular or normal society. Towns and cities, etc. are quite, quite far away from them. They are cut off from the society. They are living an independent life in that small society that they have created. But they have created that society. They have created their own culture. So first we should understand whether we are living in some remote area or we are living in a forest or we are living in a rural area. We are following a particular religion, we are following a particular or we speak a particular language or we write a particular script. The word culture has to be understood. This is the definition, it is given in your material. The a sum total of habits, values, customs, traditions, ideals and conduct of lifestyle of human being is called culture. 
what is culture culture is a sum total what do we understand by sum total total of all things that is said over here that is called the sum total yes now sum total of what habits habits make culture habits make culture in the earlier days there were lots of tribes who were very very aggressive instantly they would go to fighting and they would go to even small small petty reasons they would get angry and attack on another tribe and do a lot of destruction yes or try to conquer them try to uh eliminate them right so different types of habits found in the people in that society is the sum total of habits for example that 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 comes and that is uh that is evolved first thing is it comes into existence then it evolves and that that is passed on from generation to generation yes when you were young you were taught how to sit how to walk how to eat now that you have grown up you ask your father you ask your mother why are we following this particular habit they'll give a simple answer it happens in our home that means they were taught the same thing by their parents and their parents they were taught the same thing by their forefathers grandparents forefathers so it comes down many times you might have heard a sentence told to you by your parents hamare ghar mein ye nahi hota that is habit that is the custom that is being followed us ghar mein hota hoga hamare ghar mein nahi hota what is that you are following a particular path that is given to the next generation so a sum total of habits values what is value for example in our country the people tree the banyan tree they are just trees but they are holy and sacred in india you go to america do they worship a people tree or a banyan tree or any other tree no we have given that status and value to a tree europe ke kaun se ghar mein tulsi ugate pot mein even if they are living in a flat here a mumbai kar a person living in mumbai on the 25th floor he will still have a small pot having a small plant of tulsi and that plant will be worshiped that is the value yes so a sum total of habits sum total of the values that we have yes what is our culture why is our culture different from usa uk Europe Japan China Russia why is our culture different why is our culture different yes on auspicious occasions we touch the feet of elders many houses before in you know, first time when you leave the house for school college the children they touch the feet of elders and go when you are going on a journey you touch the feet of the elders बताओ मुझे कहाँ होता है ये इंडिया को छोड़ के दैट इज द कल्चर दैट वी वी हैव गिवन स्पेसिफिक वैल्यूज यू गो टू जापान यू गो टू रशिया एंड आज दैम ये लाइन और टाइगर किसके वहीकल है ना दे आर नो वहीकल दे आर वाइल्ड एनिमल्स हियर वी कंसीडर दैम एज वाइल्ड एनिमल प्लस वी हैव गिवन द स्टेटस मेनी ऑफ द वाइल्ड एनिमल्स एज vehicles of gods and goddesses value right so a sum total of habits values customs that we follow each and every house has a different custom each and every small part of the society has a different custom each and every religion each and every sect in that religion each and every caste we have a different custom we have a different tradition but we put that all in a nutshell because we people live in difference we have made those differences but at the end we live in the same society so there are lots of customs that makes our culture we respect each other's culture we respect each other's culture in gujarat 
whether you are belonging to any religion we just had an example touching the feet of the elder to get the blessings when you will go for standard 10 whether you are hindu whether you are muslim whether you are christian whether you are sindhi whichever religion you follow everywhere touching of the feet of the elders to get the blessings is common we have accepted the values of each other's religion we respect each other's religion right so in that way the customs that are followed the traditions that are kept alive from generation to that that makes our culture that no indian culture mein aisa nahi hota foreigners also when they come to india we welcome them with a garland that is a custom that is the tradition that we have set yes most of the hotels yes when they are booked when foreigners book uh, rooms over there yes and they arrive at the hotel they are welcomed with a garland of that yellow flower it's a custom of india it's the tradition of india and we follow that right so customs traditions ideals the great people of india they have set some ideals we follow them the people in our own family they have set ideals hamare ghar mein aisa hoga aisa nahi hoga they have set the ideals that makes our culture yes and conduct of lifestyle the lifestyle that we follow in this country is quite different from the lifestyle that is followed anywhere in any country of europe the lifestyle is different they have their own customs tradition their own lifestyle we have a different lifestyle we follow that that makes our culture so what is culture a sum total of habits values customs traditions ideals and conduct of lifestyle of human another very important definition is heritage what is heritage a valuable gift from our forefathers to us a very simple single line definition valuable gift from our forefathers to us it can be in any form not necessary that the property which is passed on from forefathers to grandfather to father to son to you no that is also generation to generation it has been handed over that is individual that is inheritance but you still have the word had it over there yes you inherit the property of your father father has inherited the property of grandfather which grandfather got from his grandfather or forefathers inherit here yeah? heritage so what is heritage heritage is a valuable gift from our forefathers to us the jungles forests that we have the rivers that we have the mountains that we have they are natural they existed even when we were not there but the forefathers have preserved that people living before us they have preserved them and handed over to us so a valuable gift given to us it can be in form of both natural and cultural yes for example the red fort of delhi red fort of delhi was made by someone which we will learn in chapter number 6 the red fort was made by someone during the mogal era right after so many years today also it is standing and it is part of our heritage because people living over there saw that it is not destroyed whoever whichever ruler came over there saw that it is preserved and handed it over to the next generation as it is rather did not do any changes but when he saw some structure is weak he repaired it so that it keeps standing we are proud to stand in front of a structure which is 200 years old 300 years or 400 years that means for 400 years people did not allow it to get destroyed 
whatever was destroyed was again reconstructed and kept in original like the heritage it has been passed on to us by our forefathers by the people living before us today we call it heritage it is also a precious gift from our motherland to the world from all over the world people come over here to see taj mahal it is not only a very rich part of the heritage that we have it is the heritage of the whole world it is one of the seven wonders of the world people come to see to india to see lots and lots of things they come to see over here our architecture a sculpting work they come to india to see forts and palaces and temples they come to see the beauty of india yes we have preserved it it was a gift to us by our forefathers we preserved it and now it is not only about our heritage it is an important part of the heritage of the whole of the world the world is proud that yes we have something which is continuous since last 5000 years and that is available in india so it is not only about our heritage it is the heritage of the world now first thing we are going to learn is natural heritage natural heritage is divided into four for the ease of understanding natural heritage we divided in into four so that we can learn these parts in a more better way yes natural heritage if we see we have landscape yes any beautiful scenery is a landscape you stand in front of a lake the view in front of you is a landscape you are on top of the mountain the view that you see turn 360 degrees yes you have 360 views at the landscape in front of you which looks very beautiful it's inspiring yes it soothes our mind be uh, brings calm to our mind we are mesmerized by that landscape the picture that is in front of device if you want to say landscape what is landscape yes i'm right now looking at you yes but my eyes can see a certain degree on both sides yes whatever fills your both eyes together at one go that is called the landscape that is available in front of you right so landscape part of natural heritage next comes the rivers yes we discussed this earlier also is lots and lots of rivers we have thousands of rivers coming out from all the parts of our country flowing and either meeting the bay of bengal or the arabian sea right but these rivers they give us fresh and sweet water that water we give it to the we give it as irrigation to agriculture yes the plants receive that fresh sweet water and give flourishing good harvest that food we take we eat we become healthy so all these things are connected right so rivers part of the natural heritage then we have vegetation it is not only about agriculture yes we have forests we have lots of medicinal plants we have lots of different types of crops we have different types of vegetables fruits we have lots of flowers all of that put together is vegetation we are going to learn it but wildlife wherever there is vegetation there will be wildlife depending upon the vegetation depending upon the climate there will be vegetation now in india we know that we have we, india is a vast country so automatically the geography also is quite different from place to place same way climate is also different from place to place according to climate rainfall is going to be different from place to place the type of forest found will be different place to place and depending upon the rainfall depending upon the forest depending upon the greenery or the vegetation available over there certain species of animals birds aquatic animals will be found some of the birds that are found in birds and animals that are found in jnk you will never find in tamil nadu the birds and uh, animals fish that are available in karnataka 
you will never find in Assam, right? Because the climate changes, soil changes, forest type changes, the uh, species of trees changes, vegetation changes, and the animals and birds dependent on that changes. So, wildlife. We are going to learn these four parts from that natural heritage one by one. Mind that explaining about natural heritage is a two mark question. Each of these parts of natural heritage is two two marks question. First thing about natural heritage. Then we'll learn about the parts separately. What is natural heritage? Natural heritage is unique and varied. Unique means one of a kind. Unique means one of a kind. The natural heritage that we have is quite unique. We have all sorts of geography, we have all sorts of soil types, we have all sorts of climate all over India. So we have a variety that is it, Vari varied. Yes, we have variety of vegetation. So, this is one type of unique country where all sorts of species of birds and animals is found, nature is found. Right? Snow falls in India. At the same time, we have places where the in summer the temperatures, temperature reaches 50 degrees. At the same time, we have the wettest place in the earth. Yes, out of 365 days, we have rainfall more than 300 days. So, we have different climate, we have different vegetation. It's a unique type of vegetation that we have, one of its kind. You do not find something like India anywhere else in the world that makes it unique one of its kind and it is varied also it includes now what does natural heritage include it's very important that you remember all these things what is included in natural heritage mountains forests deserts rivers streams seas trees plants creepers leaves insects then we come to varied landscape, the different landscapes that we have, wide range of minerals that are found under the ground, vegetation that is found on the ground, plants and animals. All of this is included in natural heritage. Yes, what is natural heritage? We have got to explain this and these are the things that you need to write. Yes, define natural heritage all these things you and they're quite common things yes we all remember these yes mountain forest desert streams whatever comes to your mind which is natural that is included in it right so it includes natural heritage includes all these things it has provided now what does nature provide us again answer yes what does nature provide us it provides us with vegetation some of the vegetation we take as food for example we take fruits we take leaves we take fruits we take leaves some of the uh, species of the plants and trees we take the roots also for medicinal purpose for eating purpose for example uh, it's a carrot or a radish we take the root as our food right so what does it give us it provides us with food first thing is the nature provide us with food because it is very very essential for our survival we eat any part of the vegetation we eat any part of the vegetation, it, it's edible, right? And it gives us some strength. We eat different parts of tree, plant that we have learnt in earlier standards in the subject of science. Yes, somewhere we eat the leaves, for example, palak, etc. Somewhere we eat the roots, for example, radish, etc. Somewhere we eat the fruits. It can be vegetable, it can be fruits. Right? So we take different parts of the, yeah. if it is crop, wheat and rice, etc., pulses, condiments, we take the fruit. Wheat is the fruit of the wheat, wheat plant, that is the crop. We harvest it. So it has provided us with food. Next, nature provides us with water in any form, whether it is the primary form, that is, Rainfall, we collect it, we have drinking water. It gets collected in lake, it's drinking water. Yes, it falls 
everywhere it's collected in the rivers rivers flow that is a rich source of drinking water that same water is given to the crops for as irrigation and the crops because they get that fresh water on time so they are able to give us good harvest that is food so water which is essential for each and every living thing living on this world so it the nature gives us water fresh air we need three things to survive food water and air that air is provided to us we pollute the air the tree is the forest that is present over air it converts that carbon dioxide carbon monoxide into oxygen and again so nature maintains itself and gives us fresh air and dwelling we make houses houses are made up of stuff that is given to us by earth right whether it is a stone whether we make a brick out of the clay whether we make cement when we make cement we are taking the raw material from the earth so to make a dwelling earlier men they lived in cave cave is a natural residence for the primitive men right today we live in cemented houses right everything that we make the house with whether that is the wall whether that is the ceiling whether that is the wooden door and window whether it is glass everything is made from the resources available from nature so dwelling you can say to cater cater means to tend to our needs example of close relationship it is not today that we realize these things even in ancient time our very close relationship with nature whether that is vegetation whether that is wildlife whether that is landscape whether they are the different forms of nature for example mountain river lake oceans they are the different forms of nature we associated nature with us how do we know it examples of close relationship with nature are stories of panchatantra everyone in our childhood including me and you we have heard the stories of panchatantra from our grandmother grandfather father mother now nowadays panchatantra story books are available yes uh, in the market we buy them and we read that yes where animals are speaking their fables right the animals are speaking the birds animals are speaking the a story is woven now birds animals trees are also sometimes speaking right so all the they can't speak they can't talk right but we weave a story with nature to make the children understand we know panchatantra at the end of the story there will be a moral so that moral based stories where birds and animals and plants trees they are speaking talking and a story is woven around it and at the end we have a beautiful message to be given to the children so we have examples of close relationship with nature with the stories of panchatantra jatak tales j a t a k a it is not to be read as jataka or something else it is jatak right so jatak tales jatak tales originated from the buddhist religion so uh, buddhist religion they have developed same thing like panchatantra they have developed stories which tell the pre- uh, the uh, words and preachings and teachings of buddha in a very unique way like animals and birds jatak tales they are also fables where animals birds the nature talks interacts with each other the different elements of nature they, uh, they interact with each other the uh, natural entities they react with interact with each other and a story is formed around it and gives a beautiful message yes a religious message sometimes so jatak tales they are related with buddhist religion so panchatantra and jatak tales both of them they are quite famous all over the world yes as fables of the ancient time and here we have two of them two contribution given to the world in the terms of fables stories children stories that is one is 
Vanch Tantra, another one is Jatak Tales. You might have heard about some uh, foreign country fables also like Aesop's fable, etc. Right? They belong to some other civilization. To our civilization, these two tell us the crow's relationship with nature. One is Panch Tantra, another is Jatak Tales. Now, as far as nature is concerned, nature is used to cure various diseases and uh, ailments that we have, uh, the pain, physical and mental pain that we have is cured with the help of nature by treating the person, the person who is suffering from one or another type of disease or injury, we treat them in a particular way which is taken wholly and solely from nature. First thing is Ayurveda. All of us living in India, we know about Ayurveda. Yes, jisko dusra naam bhi diya hota hai, jo ghar mein chalta hai, dadi ji ka nuskha. Yes, you are khaati, khaati, having a cough, automatically milk is boiled, haldi powder is mixed with it and instantly given to you, which gives you relief and you get a good night's sleep. Yes, if you are coughing, sneezing, having cold, your nose is blocked. Tea is given to you having the leaves of Tulsi, which instantly cures the cold. Yes, it is helpful to cure cold. Yes, in this way, what are we doing? We are involving nature for treating ourselves medically. So. Ayurveda. We have two, three of them. One is Ayurveda, another is Yunani and another is Nature Cure. For example, in the earlier time when the medicines of TB were not that much found, tuberculosis, lung diseases, uh, people who caught the disease were advised to go and live somewhere on the hill station for a few days to get that fresh air. Yeah, here we have polluted air uh, in the hills mountains they have fresh air so that fresh air is so what are we doing we are just involving nature in one or another type of treatment yes ayurveda is one type of treatment that is given same way yunani yes same way allopathy but allopathy has chemistry right so we don't include that right now but ayurveda yunani and nature cure yes uh, massage vagara hota hai. What is that? That is nature cure, right? Uh, eating particular things to uh, as a treatment so that the disease is the disease is diagnosed properly and the treatment is given in a natural way. So nature cure. Please remember Ayurveda, Yunani and nature cure. They are totally based on nature. Now, natural heritage we divided into four aspects that natural heritage has. One is landscape, another is vegetation, rivers, then vegetation and then wildlife. Now, we will have a look at each of these aspects separately. Each of this aspect is a two or three marks depending upon the length of the, usually it is a two mark question. Yes, now uh, describe landscape as a part of natural heritage. So, this is a question. It can be done in any other way. Why do we consider uh, landscape as one of the aspect of natural heritage? Question can be asked in any way, but we have to give the set of points that is the answer of the essay. Now let's learn that natural heritage, landscape. Now what is a landscape that we already discussed? So beautiful landscapes are generally formed. What is a landscape? Landscape is formed because of different shapes of land, example Himalayas. Himalayas you stand at the bottom of the mountain, the landscape in front of you is different. You go 5 kilometers back, the landscape that you see in front of you of that same mountain is different. You reach, you climb the mountain halfway and then you look upwards or you look outwards, the 
landscape that is in front of you is different so depending upon the shape you are standing in front of a seashore or a lake or in front of the river on the banks of the river then what happens is beautiful landscapes are created because of the shape of the land the vegetation that is growing over there example the himalayas okay it has endured indians abundantly that means landscape has in endowed indians abundantly with useful vegetation and minerals minerals are found under the ground vegetation is found on the top of the crown with the help of the shape of the land the vegetable uh, vegetation that is growing the birds animals and the fish that we is found in the water with the help of all that landscape is made so wherever we go throughout the india we have discussed this again and again yes because india is a vast country different type of climate different type of soil different type uh, uh, different difference in rainfall so depending on the vegetation we have different animals over there so it has the nature has endowed endowed showered upon us or given to us gifted us abundantly wherever you go even if we are standing in front of a desert yes the dunes formed over a beautiful shapes it makes a landscape so without vegetation also we can have beautiful landscape only rocks are there then also it's a very beautiful landscape so it has endowed indians abundantly with useful vegetation and minerals nature has given us that example the strange birds and animals that are found in our country we'll we'll be learning about this the strange birds and animals that are living the amount of uh, uh, variation that we have the amount of the number of species of birds and animals found in india right we'll be learning about that in chapter number 9 but right now strange birds and animals that are found mountain peaks covered with snow will be having a uh, look at some of the pics over here which will show you that if you keep standing in front of you you're mesmerized by that view in front of you yes that view is so excellent yes that you get absorbed in that view because a beautiful mountain rising straight up in the sky the peak is covered the whole of the mountain sometimes is covered with snow and it's a very beautiful landscape so strange birds animals mountain ki peaks covered with snow brimming rivers with are the gifts of the himalayas from the himalayas lots and lots of rivers are coming they are always full with water and it's a beautiful sight to stand in front of a river and keep watching the flow the melodious music created by the flow of water the scenery that is created especially during morning and that is a sunset that is the dusk and dawn all of that is beautiful landscape forests of tarai tarai are at the bottom of the himalayas right so the tarai forest they are having rocks also big big boulders of rocks at the same time long trees are coming out of it there is a different type of vegetation over there the different type of animals that are found over there that makes tarai quite unique one of its kind in the world right so forests of tarai and its pilgrimage places like amarnath badrinath kedarnath all of them they are the holy places connected with the religion of hinduism right so we have beautiful landscape formed and some of the important temples belonging to the hindu religion they are found over there the forests of tarai they are amarnath badrinath kedarnath the high mountain peak of uh, nanda devi one example of one of the high peaks of given they are beautiful landscape now let's have a little bit look at the pic we can see over here amarnath pilgrimage very famous yes drop by drop water keeps on falling and a shivling uh, takes its shape yes a huge shivling yes it turns that water dripping from the top turns into ice and a shivling is found out of it uh, formed out of it and uh, it is considered quite holy in hinduism and people throng to visit it and offer their prayers to the shivling we can see over here you can see the whole 
mountain, single rock, carved out of it is the Amarnath cave, which is considered as a pilgrimage. Badrinath temple is the next one. You can see the famous Badrinath temple on the uh, backdrop. We have high rising mountains of the Himalayas. That means this is still at the Tarai uh, level, yes, where the mountains are just ending, right? From there, we can see the rise of the mountains. Yes, Badrinath temple, even considered as pilgrimage. Then we have the famous Kedarnath temple. Here we can see in the backdrop, yes, no vegetation is there, just rocks, the Himalaya mountains. Yes, the whole range of it, we can see snow covered mountains in the backdrop and the holy Kedarnath temple, right? At the next peak, we can see. Nanda Devi, right? If you see Nanda Devi completely covered with snow, but from where the pick has been taken, it doesn't have any snow over there. But here, it's snow line, right? And Nanda Devi rises more than 7 kilometers right from the ground. A straight, we can see over here, a straight climb. 7 kilometers rising straight from the ground. So, these offer beautiful landscapes to India. Now we come to the next aspect of natural heritage that is rivers. Indian culture has flourished on the river banks of Indus and the Ravi, the Indus Valley civilization. But where did people start living? On the banks of river Indus, on the banks of river Ravi. Yes. Satlaj. These are the areas where civilization started. Why did they start? Because the basic need of human being is food, water. Food and water. First thing is when they are near the river, they get sufficient water for their survival to make a lots of things, to irrigate their fields with the water from the river, drinking purpose. Uh, we use water for domestic use for cleaning purpose, cooking purpose, for washing purpose. Yes, nowadays for industrial purpose also we need water. Yes, so most of the factories they are situated where water is available in plenty today also, right? Otherwise, nowadays we have that pipeline system, it's not a problem. But then we are talking about the ancient time when the civilization had just started developing and flourishing. So, Indian culture has flourished on the river banks of Indus, Ravi, and then slowly we come to river Ganga, right? Rivers have been providing water transportation since ages. The very best thing that I like about a river is you just need a small raft. You uh, tie few logs of wood, small, small logs of wood together. You have a raft ready. You don't need a boat or single people. Right? You don't need a boat. You just stand on it and give it a push. It will flow with the water free of charge. You will reach from place A to place A. So this is navigation right so transportation you can carry men and material the river to and fro from place a to place b from place b to place a right and uh, transportation in river is always cost efficient that is the most cheap transportation available since ages you just put a sail yes on the small boat you put up a sail the wind will carry you from place A to P and vice versa, right, free of charge. So, rivers have been providing water transportation since ancient times. People, people's lives have been greatly influenced by the rivers like the Ganga, the Yamuna, the Saraswati, the Indus, the Narmada, the Godavari, the Krishna, etc. Yes, in India, we consider rivers as Lokmata. Rivers are called Lokmata. It's not given over here, but sometimes uh, different sorts of questions are asked by the board. It means the same. Yes, whom do we consider Lokmata? Rivers. Why do we consider it as Mata? Because Mata, the mother, always is a giver. Rivers, they, are, they give. What do they give? Sweet water for whatever use you want, right? For drinking purpose, for quenching your thirst, for making anything by mixing water. For example, you mix water with clay. We can make 
lots of beautiful pieces of pottery pots cooking utensils from clay by mixing water with the clay at the same time we spread the mixture of clay cow dung and water yes that mixture is spread on the floor if we go to rural areas where the floors are not tiled for example a hut the floor is not tiled right so what do they do to cover their floor they cover it with a mixture of water cow dung and clay the walls are plastered with that same material it keeps the inside cool right so in this way whatever use we have irrigation purpose whatever people's lives have been greatly influenced we consider them uh, quite holy for example um, ganges is the holiest river in india everyone in aspire every every hindu aspires to take a holy dip in river ganges once in a lifetime right that much importance that much value we have given to river ganga right uh, ban ganga in south is it, it is considered ganga of the south same way narmada we as are considered as holy rivers we always consider rivers as holy so our lives are greatly influenced by many of these rivers like ganga yamuna and this most of them have feminine names brahmaputra being an exception uh, yes most of the rivers we give feminine names because we consider them holy and we consider them motherly right so that is why we give especially most of the rivers whichever river you take sabarmati even in gujarat lots of rivers are there right but most of the names will be feminine yes because motherly touch is found over there it cares about us it gives us that much required water for all our purposes so people's lives have been greatly influenced rivers are a rich source for what purpose do we use the water of the river drinking water domestic use irrigation nowadays generation of electricity and of course for navigation that is called waterway that river the path is used as a waterway we have roadways we have airways we have uh, waterways one is the uh, uh, sea ocean another is inland that inland is called a waterway so we use it for regular navigation men was dependent on rivers to develop industries in the ancient time we needed water for our survival not only for drinking purpose not only for washing purpose domestic use for um, applying the mixture on the floor right but we used it for other purposes also right we made clay utensils toys pitchers pots pans lots of these things and for that we needed water so man was dependent on rivers to develop industries of clay utensils plastering and building of houses and in the early days this plaster white plaster that we have that was not there what did we use on the floor on the plaster inside on the for the plaster outside what did we use we made um, uh, houses of you say straw also we made houses of stone also bricks also but we need to plaster on top of that to keep the bricks safe to keep the wall safe which plaster did we apply the mixture of water clay and cow dung it kept the inside almost 5 degrees if the outside temperature is 40 degree the inside temperature that hut which is plastered floored with the mixture of water cow dung and clay will be 5 degrees less you will be experiencing quite cool inside so that is what people used well, in the earlier days because we didn't uh, before the minerals were found out metal was found and how to uh, refine that metal and use that metal before these things were found men was totally dependent on that industry is totally dependent on water clay utensils plastering everything water was used if we go near the rivers if we go near the landscape especially during the dawn and dusk beautiful landscape is formed in front of the setting sun the rising sun yes both of them they are beautiful yes and the poets uh painters these people they go to the 
river banks, especially during dawn and dusk, to get inspiration for writing their poetry, for making their pictures. They need that landscape in front of them so that they can get inspiration. So, landscape scenes at dawn and dusk are source of inspiration for artists and enrich the lives of the people by developing aesthetic sense. Aesthetic means inner. Aesthetic means inner, which cannot be expressed in words, but we feel that joy. We see a beautiful flower. We don't explain how, what joy we feel, but we feel that joy inside. That is aesthetic for inner joy. Aesthetic means inner joy, right? So we have some pics over here of rivers. River Ganga at Varanasi, we can see that an old man is praying over there, his usual prayers, offering his prayers to uh, river Ganga. River Ganga is considered as one of the most holiest rivers in uh, our country. Yes, we can see lots of navigation is also happening. All of that happens on the banks of river Ganga. We can see it's quite stretched from here because of the mist. We cannot see the other side of the river, the other bank. Next, we see river Brahmaputra and Assam. A long stretch of the bridges over here. The span is quite big. Yes, and it's one of the important river of the northeast. River Godavari, which is one of the biggest rivers of the South India. You can see again, stretches quite a lot. This is a barge where water is stopped and allowed to flow gently so that it doesn't cause flood. Yes, to the uh, areas that are below it. River Krishna, we can see a dam is constructed over here and water is then collected in the dam and the river is flowing somewhere over here, this way, right, river is flowing. The dam is constructed and you can see power generation is done over here, the same water is after generation of the power, that same water is allowed to flow and it is given as drinking water for water for irrigation, canals are constructed out of dams, so quite useful. With this, we end today's lecture. Thank you, students.